We are Fran and Rich. And for the last six years, we've been living and travelling aboard our narrowboat on the inland waterways of Britain. We've been travelling with our two companions, Jess and Archie. Now we also have Percy, the motorhome, to further extend our adventures. So why not tag along and see the UK through our eyes? Well, here we are in the beautiful village of Bidford, about to go through the 15th century irregular arched bridge. There are no choices which arch you can pass under, so the one on the far left, as indicated by the arrows, is your only choice. The bridge has been closed for some time now to vehicular traffic, as uh, amazingly enough, a taxi managed to get itself wedged. Eighteen miles today from Bidford and Avon through Evesham, winding our way past the unlikely name village of Wire Piddle to the beautiful town of Pershaw. Loving every minute of it. The weather's been in our favour. A little bit windy, isn't it? The wind yeah, is a bit cool. It's okay. But um, the river is just beautiful. And so far today, all the locks have been in our favour, which makes it a little bit easier. And when you leave these locks, you leave the gates open. So we're just able to cruise off and uh, get on our way. It's fab. Yeah, it sure is living up to its reputation. It's very twisty, windy in places like right here. This bit, yeah. <laughs> But uh, absolutely stunning, really stunning. And uh, when you think about it, this is why we're doing this, isn't it? It's just wonderful. Every day's a new adventure. And we've also found, um, it's not mentioned in the books, and we didn't know that most of the locks have got um, overnight mooring just before the lock as you come down. And we're loving those because mm. they're quiet and uh, some of them, the access to footpaths and stuff is not that great. But yesterday we moored about half a mile or a mile out of the town of in Bidford. Bidford, and the moorings in Bidford are quite noisy and busy. There's a play park next to it and pubs, but we had maybe just a ten-minute walk into the village to have a look round, um, and then got back to our peaceful mooring. So, fab That's brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. We have people ask us, you better plan for the future and get back on the property ladder. Well, we haven't got to do anything, to be <laughs> honest. We don't tend to worry about the future. Now and again, I have a bit of a blip, but you can't, there's nothing you can do about the future. The future's the future, you can't change it. And uh, we've known so many people who've died under the age of 70 in the last five years. And it's, um, it's, it's just, you just don't need to worry. The, th the thing is that while we're fit and able to explore and enjoy and investigate life then we should do it and if it means at the end of the day we have to sell the boat and go and live in a little flat somewhere when we're not mobile then that's what we will do or hopefully just get a mooring if you need to. At the moment while we're able to go off and do everything we want to do we just feel that we should do it. Um, as you say nobody knows we might win the lottery on Monday. We don't know. Um, <laughs> or wish. something terrible could happen. But we're enjoying this, especially at times like this. Yeah, so uh, watch this space, folks. You'll see us on our Zimmer frames before we get off the boat. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows what the future holds? And don't worry about it. People ask us, you know, well, they say that they're a certain age and they're thinking of getting a boat. Are you too old? 
it's got nothing to do with the number. Forget the number of what age you, you are, just it's how you are in yourself, how your mental state is, how your physical state is. I, a lady came through a lock when I was on my own on the boat a couple of weeks ago, and I went up to help her, and she must have been late 70s. Mm. Um, and she was doing the locks on her own. Her husband had unfortunately died, and she thought about selling the boat and then decided to carry on. And she just goes very, very slowly, and often at locks people will help her out. But she was climbing up the lock ladders and just doing it in her own time, and it was real inspiration. Just never say never. It must be tough for people who enjoy living this life when a partner dies the decision whether to carry on or not. And I guess, you know, a lot of family would be encouraging them to go back to land and live in a flat or whatever, but uh, it's tough. It is really hard. I can't imagine doing it without you. I can't imagine doing it on my well, own. Well, we don't even think about we don't that, even, do no, we Let's really? not think about Just... it. Where did this go? <laughs> no, how did we, how this, did we get here? This wasn't meant to be like this. <laughs> but these anyway. things, things, things go through your mind and we do get asked these questions quite often. And you're right, we do get told by people that we've got to start thinking about the future and we should buy property before it's too late. Well, no, we're not in that mindset. We don't agree with that. No. What was we said about not giving in? You're not even halfway done yet. Keep going, Fran. You're nearly there. Oh, it's been 10 minutes. <laughs> anyway, this is Harvington Luck, and those moorings opposite with the blue paint on would have been a fabulous place to moor up for the night. But we've got a mission, we've got to get going, so we can't. Oh, come. Well, we're still going, friends. <laughs> You're not even halfway, Fran. Come on, keep going. If I have to get off this boat, oh, blimey, time for action. Oh, just stay there, I'm coming. No, it's going, it's going, it's going, it's going. Near to here is the amazing moated Elizabethan manor house of Harvington Hall, famous for its seven priest halls and stories of religious persecution. The last time I went there, amazingly, was 40 years ago when my young daughter of six months, Claire, screamed her way from the entrance to the exit. Thanks, Claire. Idiot. Anyway, this wonderful lock keeper's hut was designed to be watertight, but hasn't been used since the big floods of 2007. We're going to bypass the town called Evesham coming up, which is a bit of a pity. We are on a dead, bit of a deadline. Um, but we're going to go to Breeden Hill. So we're going to miss Evesham so we can climb up Breeden Hill. Now Breeden Hill was immortalized in the set of poems called A Shropshire Lad by A.E. Houseman. And then uh, Vaughan Williams set music to it, which is one of my favorite pieces of music. And Breeden Hill is one of my favorite pieces of his songs. So we're going to climb up Breeden Hill and apparently you can see five counties from the top of there. So. Um, we're going to look forward to that. So that's Thursday today. I can't remember what the date is. And we're going up there on Saturday, all being well. So fingers crossed, the weather's looking good apparently. So it'd be a great thing to do, I think. And once again, we had that discussion this morning. If we do Evesham, if we stop at Evesham and look around, we wouldn't have had time to do Breeden Hill as well. Um, and, you know, we see lots of towns and Evesham is probably very, very lovely but we just can't do everything. And we no. just summed it up and we haven't done a hill walk for quite a long while since Kinver Edge. Um, and it's time we've got those legs working again. So that's what we're doing. But we're gonna stop off at a town called Pershaw and uh, have a quick look around there um, before we head into Tewkesbury. So we did think about 
doing this river again coming when we come back up but uh, it's going to be sort of early spring probably and the, and the river levels are going to be fluctuating up and down so it makes us a bit nervous so we'll see we'll see because it would be nice to do it at our own steam wouldn't it yeah. yeah as we said before unfortunately we've got a deadline again this time but we might have we might have taken two weeks just to do the bit we're doing in in one week but that's life you can't always um we're not in control of it all we just go with the flow Here we are, we've just arrived at Evesham. Fran's on the boat waiting for me to set the lock. This is Evesham lock, obviously. And I was a day ahead of myself this morning when we were talking about not stopping at Evesham. So we're gonna go down, fill up with water and have a think and uh, see if we need to stay or not. There is a nice Italian restaurant here that I'd like to investigate, so uh, that might sway our decision. No, that would be a spectacular place to live. And I might be tempted to give up the boat. Well, the decision was made. We're not going to stop at Evesham, but to press on to Pershore. We really want to spend some time at Breeden Hill, so rather than rush our time there, we're just going to skip through Evesham. Look at where the boat is and look at the green sign on the left, the one up top. That's how high the water came in July 2007. In July, not November or December, man alive. So after shooting through Evesham, uh, some really lovely countryside, the river really meanders, it's really wiggly. Um, there's no villages anywhere on the river at the moment because they're avoiding the floodplain, so the villages are away from the river. But it is splendid, it's really, really nice. So we've got about four miles before we get to Pershore and one last lock. So it's been quite a day, it's getting late in the day now, it's about four o'clock-ish. We've been going since 10, about 10 o'clock this morning, and uh, yeah, looking forward to putting my feet up now. Francis, by the way, is inside cooking an apple crumble, which is nice. How's that crumble going, Fran? Okay, these, um, we're in the Vale of Evesham, which is the fruit basket of England. There's apple trees everywhere. So these were just from a basket in somebody's, at the front of somebody's house. And I found some remnants of frozen summer berries in the freezer. So yeah, another apple crumble. I'm sorry, Rich. Oh. That's all you seem to get these days. <laughs> Don't you worry, Treacle. <laughs> Crack on.
I think that's what you call upwardly mobile. So this is the only diamond shaped lock left on the river. Not sure why it's diamond shaped, so if you know, let me know in the comments below. You warm enough? Uh, it's really got cold <laughs> now. We're here in Pershaw, there's just one other boat on these moorings. Uh, right in a park, look at that, it's lovely. Dogs are happy. Dogs are really they happy. Took, they always take one look out of the boat as soon as we moor up and they saw this and you could see the joy in their faces. <laughs> <laughs> so that was 18 miles and seven locks, bit of a long day, but um, would have been longer on the canals because there's no flow, so. We really enjoyed it though, it's been fabulous hasn't it? We, I think we'd had enough, the time we got here we're tired. I've had enough, yeah. And um, there's a shop just the other side of the Asda green. supermarket there, you're going to pick tomatoes off the roof. Yeah. And that's that, we're going to have a nice evening of Italian food. Yes. On board. <laughs> They're really sweet and um, there's lots of them. So we're having a roasted tomato, um, and olive pasta, I think. Here we are in the beautiful town of Pershaw with many, many fine Georgian buildings still remaining. This area is famous for its fruit produce, especially plums. The only drawback is the amount of traffic passing through the main high street. It's crying out for a bypass to be built. This is the beautiful Church of St Andrews, which is now a community hub. I wasn't allowed entry as they were handing out food parcels to the needy. But across the street stands the Abbey, jewel in the crown of Pershaw, now known as the Parish Church of the Holy Cross, dating back to the 10th century. How fantastic. Well, thanks for watching and we'll leave you here with this glorious view of the old abbey. Next week we'll be huffing and puffing our way up Breeden Hill, so be sure to catch that one. And a big thank you to all our patrons and members and anybody who buys our scarves and artwork. It is really, really appreciated. Thank you so much and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. <laughs>